think we're supposed to go around with microphones and uh, and do questions. All right. Um, oh, how are you? Yeah, hi. Uh, that happened last night. I did. <coughs> All right. Somebody has the microphone? Oh, there you go. Very quick question. One of your early slides, like the third or fourth, had something about the reasons we have more issues these days are because of fast food, screen time, and less exercise because our jobs are desk jobs. The very last or second to last on that same screen said something about temperature. And I was wondering what that meant. So it turns out, um, and I, you know, I'm not really an expert at that portion of it, but that's listed as one of the things. And, uh, somebody's hand going up because they know the answer to it. Oh, so okay. So the issue, as I understand it, is that people um, like a colder room, which you would think would increase the um, metabolic rate to try to maintain heat, uh, but it seems to have the opposite effect, and people sort of relax more, um, and so people end up burning less calories, maybe because they're just moving less. Um, so I, I, it seems paradoxical to me, and uh, if anybody can explain that to me, that'd be great. <laughs> Uh, that, that actually, if you saw the reference on it, uh, well, I can say that I always like warm rooms and I can't keep a pound on. So, <laughs> so I believe them, I just don't know what the mechanism is. I see. All right, well, feel free to email me if you find the answer. Uh, so I think this gentleman. Thank you, that was fantastic, Kim. That was great. Listen, um, tell us about taurine, the vegetarians, tell us about taurine, and is cream safer than milk? Heavy cream, no carb. So Just taurine? the lipid. Taurine. Oh, taurine. Taurine, taurine. taurine. Yeah. yeah, the amino acid taurine. Um, yeah, this came up last night, uh, and uh, all it does is bring back a little bit of PTSD. <laughs> PTSD for me because it was I, I learned a big lesson. I was vice president of the American Heart of American College of Cardiology, and uh, someone um, was talking about uh, taurine and how it could actually improve uh, the function of the heart. And it was an MRI study, and uh, they interviewed me about it because I'm a cardiovascular radiology person, and I was saying that you know, you, looking at the ejection fraction and looking at improvement of the function of the heart might be good, but it might be a bad thing. It might be that long term you end up burning out your heart. And so uh, let's do a long term study and find out what's going on. You know, you, it needs to be studied more. So the funniest part about that is about three months later, I got another call talking, like, talking about energy drinks containing taurine and caffeine and the heart effects. And I got on there and I said, you know, we need more studies. We can't, you know, we can't make any definitive uh, uh, statements about it until there are more studies. Whew. The problem was they weren't talking about uh, improvement of ventricular function. They were talking about sudden cardiac death. And that report came out saying that Dr. Williams says that we need more studies even though people have died. Whoa. <laughs> so I learned a big lesson. All right. So um, that... A uh, little unnecessary anecdote is probably for anyone who's going to talk with the media, get very clear what it is they're talking about before you respond. Um, and so the, the concerns that I have about this, the use of it in, uh, in energy drinks is, is uh, I think, a real one because it causes rhythm disturbances. Is it the taurine alone? Is it taurine plus the caffeine? Is it the taurine, uh, caffeine, and sugar? Okay, that combination. So I, I would not be a fan of doing this until there are studies showing that it's safe. All right. Yes. Um, with the exception of what the uh, mass media has been saying, I have never heard anything healthy being said about polyunsaturates, uh, especially when you cook with them, they create loads of free radicals. Everybody's saying monounsaturates. Um, yet you had studies citing that polyunsaturate consumption lowers heart disease risk? What uh, kind yes. of polyunsaturates are we referring to? Because I've never heard anything like that. So that actually is the, uh, the fat advisory, and so I encourage you to look it up. But my understanding is that there's a lot of truth in what you're saying. That is, when you take a polyunsaturated or monounsaturated oil and you cook it at high heat, 
you're breaking double bonds all the time. You're making it more saturated. You're making it more atherogenic. And so uh, not a fan of cooking oil or frying uh, things at all. I'm, I, I, I have to say one thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Avocado oil has a smoke point of uh, 500 degrees. So I think the polyunsaturates are worse culprit than uh, the monos, especially with specific oils like avocado oil. Interesting. Um, yeah. It's when the smoking point is when they become carcinogenic. How about that? Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's, a, that's a really good point, that that slide was only talking about the effect on uh, cholesterol and heart disease, nothing about cancer. Yes, sir. You mentioned that the plant-based ketogenic diet can reduce mortality by 18% versus an animal-based ketogenic increases uh, mortality by 18%. Mm -hmm. Lancet right. Public Health, September right. of last year. Mm -hmm. Now, for somebody who, uh, uh, <coughs> who is on this uh, completely plant-based uh, with the grains and uh, beans involved, what is the mortality uh, change? Decrease. I missed the two said. You said beans and grains. Well, right. I mean, if you if you are completely plant based, you avoid the oils. You have the nuts. You have the beans, and you have the grains, and you have the fruits and vegetables, which is which is low carb, plant based, but it's not like ketogenic plant based. Okay. So, uh, how does that compare with the ketogenic plant based diet? So I I don't know that there's any any data. Uh, specifically, I, it sounds like a, a good logic. Cardiology, we get burned by logic all the time, so um, I would always want more data uh, before giving an answer to something like that. Right, so the ketogenic diet allows you some fat versus... Oh, yeah, I mean, that, well, the plant-based diet that Shikani's article talked about, right. that had, like, peanut butter and vegetable oil and the like uh, as a source of fat, as and the, then beans and, the, and nuts as the source of, uh, of plant-based protein. Right. And right. it seemed to be decreasing mortality. Now, again, it's decreasing relative to what? It's relative to the standard diet. And so could you have done a 60% improvement if you just stopped doing ketogenic diet at all completely? Uh, no way to answer that from that data set. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. So, you know, this might go faster if you guys pick out the next person and just give them the microphone. Yeah. There you go. Hi. Yes, thank, thank you, Dr. Williams. It's always great to see you and hear you. Thank you for everything you do. Um, Two-fold question, or two questions. For an individual who's compliant in a whole food plant-based diet, except his one downfall is the sugar aspect. Mm -hmm. yep. And I saw the data. Thank you. Um, you know, could I, is it possible I could have sugar maybe once a month instead of once a week? Or, or do I really need to just give up on this idea and just start to go without sugar is one main question. The other one, and I probably need to, I know what I need to do. But, but seriously, the other one, this is for a friend of mine. So I am whole food, plant-based. Mm -hmm. no, 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 that one was for me. I know what I need to do. But for my friend, I'm trying to mentor someone who's thinking about going whole food, plant-based. He's 55, he's had a heart attack, he's got a stent. His heart capacity is 34%, but his cardiologist is telling him, don't have green leafy vegetables because you'll have too much vitamin K. So I wanted your thoughts on that. Okay, so let's start on the vitamin K issue. Um, so, um, but I gotta go back to what you said. So I, I, I did go to school at University of Chicago where Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross was there, uh, you know, the death and dying and the five stages of grief. And what you just described was the bargaining <laughs> for, okay, you, you, you're, you're, you're beyond denial, but it's, you've got to get to acceptance at some point, <laughs> okay. Um, and so, uh, but to answer that question, um, I actually do, you know, there's a, my, my favorite vegan restaurant has these beautiful uh, vegan brownies. Uh, I will buy one and eat half of it at once a month, you know, and, and, you know, but my excuse for doing that is occasionally I want some insulin to try to drive more nutrients in there because I, I work too much, I don't eat enough, and I play too much tennis, 
and I'm 30 pounds below my playing weight from, uh, uh, from when I was a pro tennis player, and I'd like some of that back. So, but sugar probably is not the way to get there. Um, the, uh, so the other side of, um, uh, of you know, the, with the sugar addiction, it's very difficult for people, uh, and I understand that uh, behaviorally, culturally, it's very difficult uh, to make that change. And you know, the, probably, I would say, the number one thing that helps people get over it really is switching more to fruit and saying, you know, I'm not going to have that, ice, that vegan ice cream. I'm going to have a banana or something like that. It seems to work. Uh, there was another part of your question. Um, right. Yeah, I didn't want to skip that one. So um, the vitamin K antagonist, warfarin, it's really important uh, that people who have the conditions that need it, uh, that you watch the vitamin K uh, intake. The cardiologist should be not saying absence or abstinence. They should be saying consistency. That means really taking it seriously. I mean, take your calendar, put it on the refrigerator, and map out how many salads, how many mustard greens, how many spinach, kale, all of it, Put it up there and make sure that it's consistent, if not day to day, certainly week to week. And that's, that's a burden to put on people, but that's the nature of that drug. Um, that drug is really difficult for us in the United States and other countries, but we have one of the worst track records. You measure it, so so-called TTR, the time in the therapeutic range in the United States with that drug is about 60%. That means 40% of the time people are at risk because their, uh, their uh, anticoagulation is too high, which causes intracranial hemorrhage. Uh, and the other half of the time, they're under the, th the therapeutic range, meaning that they're going to get a clot and perhaps a stroke. Um, the, the best news in that whole issue is that we have four new drugs, non-novel anticoagulants, that are able to get around the use of warfarin for so many conditions. There are some that, like, uh, artificial mechanical valves where we don't have any data and I don't think we're actually going to get data anytime soon about their use, but the usual things like a clot in the leg or atrial fibrillation, you, have, you know, everybody's heard of that, it's on television, do you have AFib? It's a really important cause of stroke uh, and those can be handled very well with the, the novel uh, oral anticoagulants and get around this whole issue of, of warfarin. I have a question. <coughs> mm -hmm. yes. I've, we've heard all the saturated fats and everything, but I have a question. What about mayo? What about mayo? mayonnaise? Mayonnaise? Um, so it's in a lot of food. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. So interestingly enough, there uh, there is there are brands of vegan mayonnaise that people can buy. Uh, they don't go on a no-fat diet. If you're overweight, I would not recommend them, uh, but I certainly would eat them because I'm always trying to gain weight. Um, if you are careful about the content, please flip it over, look at the sodium content, look at the fat content, uh, and if it's not something that you shouldn't be doing, uh, where, and where do I draw the line? Is central obesity. If you've got something extra there, you probably don't need to, to eat that sort of thing. Okay. All right, we're good. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay.